Have you made any changes to your wardrobe now that you're over 50? If you haven't, you're gonna need these. Here's 10 things I no longer wear over 50. So let's dive right in. Hello, fashionista. I'm Nancy Queen, and I'm here to help you build a wardrobe full of clothes you love to wear, so you love getting dressed every single day. And today we're talking about things I no longer wear now that I'm over 50. I feel that with age comes wisdom and there's certain things we just don't need to wear now that we're over 50. But before we start the list, I have a surprise for you. I've never done this before, uh, but I'm going to do a giveaway. I featured this bag in a recent video. It's a Lily Pulitzer pineapple bag and it is fully lined and fully reversible with a cork lining so you can wear it either way it has a tassel it retails for two hundred dollars and i am going to give this away at random if you want to find out what you need to do watch all the way to the end and i'll give you the details so let's get into the things i no longer wear anymore now that i'm over 50. number one on my list is too much makeup now I used to have drawers and drawers full of makeup and I showed you long, not too long ago, this is my makeup bag. I mean, literally, this is it, all I wear. That's, that's it right there. In fact, I have a new makeup set coming that I'm so excited to show you because I think that I'm going to be paring down even less than this, if you can believe it or not. But I will keep you posted on that because I've had a lot of questions about what is my makeup routine and I've been giving it a lot of thought. There's a couple com companies I've been considering because like I said, I just don't go and buy tons of makeup anymore. I like my routine to be very simple and easy. And I think that's what life is all about now that we are over 50 is just simplifying, making things easy so that you can do the things that really matter to you in your life. Number two on my list is high heels, you know, those ultra, ultra high heels and uncomfortable shoes. We've been around enough ladies to know that we don't want to get any bunions or hammer toes or varicose veins we want to take care of our legs and more than even more than that being comfortable just weighs in over everything else that we do so i really have abandoned most i have two pairs of like a heel that's about an inch and a half high other than that all of my shoes are flats i go for comfort number one over anything else and who's with me? Let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer comfortable shoes? Number three on my list is trends I don't like just because a fashion magazine or a brand says that is the in trend. I feel like I've been through so many trends and I, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, that we, we've seen pretty much every trend. So now we're left with let's just wear what we like what makes us feel comfortable what makes us feel good colors that we feel pretty in let's just wear those items and not follow the trends any longer i mean if you like staying on trend that's okay but you don't have to dive into every single fashion trend to keep up with everyone else just do what you like update your wardrobe on occasion and add in some new things that make you happy. Number four on my list is dressing for others. Now, I know when I was younger, I would dress to match my friends or to what they were wearing, or we'd go shopping together, or I'd dress to, to wear what my boyfriend liked on me or my husband. And now I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I like to wear what I like. If they don't like it, well, too bad. I really dress for me and so that I'm happy with who I see in the mirror every day. Number five on my list are clothes that I don't feel good in. Now, I don't know how many times I've been with people in a fitting room and they buy things just because they think they should, even though they don't really like how it feels or how they feel good in it like a, a spouse or husband or salesperson will tell them how good it looks they buy it and then they never really love it so only buy clothes that you feel good in when you look in the mirror you want to see someone you like looking back at you and 
wear only those clothes. And speaking of, this dress might look familiar if you watched this recent video on how to wear a t-shirt dress. I featured this little dress and today I just showed it a picture of it, but today I'm wearing it. I've got it on with my little white denim jacket and it's great for this time of year when it's hot it's a little a-line dress so i don't know if you can see too much but if you've got a fuller figure a little bit of hip a little junk in the trunk this dress is great or even a belly this hides so many flaws because rather than a regular t-shirt dress that goes straight up and down this one uh, flares so as always I'll put links to everything I talk about in this video in the description below so let's move on to the next one number six on my list is a cumbersome hairstyle now I don't know if you've seen any of these hair wraps and you know you're using these curling irons to put lovely curls in your hair and don't get me wrong I think they look beautiful however I don't want to spend more than literally three minutes on my hair. So I really like to go for hairstyles that, you know, I can do it in the morning, style it, and then I am good to go all day long. If we head out to dinner, I might put another like, spritz of hairspray in it, but then I'm done. If it's starting to bother me, I might take a barrette midday and put a clip in it. <laughs> but other than that, I really don't mess with my hair. I just like it again. Going back to the makeup, I like things free, easy, comfortable, and that I really don't have to think of and worry about all the time. Number seven on my list is buying clothes that aren't your style. Now, we talked about this, and I'm going to talk about this more in an upcoming video, uh, about knowing your style and really sticking with that. Because when you're building a wardrobe that works, in fact, uh, if you check out my capsule wardrobe video, you'll know more on that. Once you know your style, then you can buy everything that is your style. It all will mix and match and you'll be able to multiply your wardrobe because you've bought clothing that's kind of in the same genre. And you might be thinking, well, some days I feel romantic and some days I feel sporty and other days I feel this way. Well, that's okay to have those feelings, but you're gonna make your life so much harder if one day you're dressing bohemian and the next day you're full on prep. And it's kind of like, well, who are you? What are, are your clothes saying about you and emulating from you? And if that's what you like, that's okay. That's just something I no longer do because I found it really hard to get dressed every day when I was searching for pieces for a bohemian look. And then the next day I'm looking for pieces for a preppy look and mixing and matching. And the next day I want to look artsy. Whereas if I just go with one cohesive look and that I can try on a garment and go, okay, this goes with 10 other things in my wardrobe. Plus it looks like my style. I feel like me in it. Then it is on brand for me. You don't have to pigeon your whole yourself into saying I am only bohemian or I am only preppy. If you want to, you can, but you want it to say, is this a style for me? Is this cohesive with what I want to say about myself. And like I said, stay tuned because I have an upcoming video on that topic with more details. Tip number eight, I no longer use suntan lotion, baby oil, and iodine. Now, you know, give it a like if you know you've done this in the past. I know my 80s friends, this was something we did on the regular. We would take a bottle of baby oil, put iodine in it, slather it all over ourselves. We'd get this like reddish stain on us. We'd soak out there. Sometimes we'd even have uh, mirrors to reflect or we'd lay as close to the pool as we could so that it would reflect and get us as tan or burned from, in my case, as possible. And now we know it's no longer healthy to do that. I still get a little color in the summer just because I'm here in Newport Beach and I like to be outside, but I no longer try to tan. I wear sunscreen whenever I head out. And I'm gonna link my favorite sunscreens below because I have this one that I love because I can just spray it on like a, it's like a moisture spritz. Just spray it on my face, on my upper body, and it's a very good protectant. 
it works well for me and I'm not dealing with like slathering things all over me and having white lines so I will link that as well below. Number nine on my list that I no longer do is I don't chase trends. Now this goes back to buying what you like, um, not dressing for others, but you don't wanna chase trends anymore. And like I said, this does not mean that you have to totally bow out of staying on some trends, but you don't have to be in the fast fashion wheel of, okay, Vogue came out with the new latest styles or who, what, where said, what's in, what's out, and I need to follow that. You don't. In fact, their whole thing is to change as quickly as possible so that you're on a hamster wheel of clothing changes. So just buy things that you like, that feel good on you, that make you happy, and like I said, keep introducing a few pieces each season that will keep your wardrobe relevant. Not that you're not relevant, but that your wardrobe is a little modern, fresh, and with the times. And number 10 on my list is wearing too many accessories. Now, if you remember who said it, put that in the comments, because I can't remember right now who said it, but they said, get yourself all dressed up, put on all your accessories, and then just take off one item. And actually, I had a bracelet and a watch on here, and I took those off today, because I just didn't feel like I needed all that. So you don't need a necklace and earrings and bracelet and rings on every finger. You can pare back on all of those things and just go easy and just give a hint of style and accessories. In fact, a lot of accessories currently are very pared down and it doesn't mean you can't have one or two big pieces, but you just wanna pare down on things and really go with a lighter, airier style and you'll feel a lot freer and more comfortable when you lighten up a little bit. Now, the last thing I wanna do is touch on this giveaway. Okay, so I am giving doing a giveaway for the first time ever. If you want to be part of the giveaway, it's a $198 Lily Pulitzer bag. It's fully reversible to a cork inside. And actually the cork inside has gold flecking on it. So whichever side you wear is totally chic, great. It's a great sized bag, it's large. You could use it as a beach tote, a carry around tote, an everyday purse. I love the big tassel on it. So what you need to do to enter in the contest for this giveaway, so you need to like the comment, you need to be a subscriber to this channel, and you also need to leave a comment about something that you liked or didn't like in the video. So again, this is the bag I'm giving away. It's a $198 Lily Pulitzer bag. And I'm going to announce the winner when my next video comes out and that will be released on Sunday, August 21st. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.